Have you been feeling overwhelmed with your home lately? I don't get stuck in overwhelm so much anymore. It happens from time to time, but looking back 15 years ago, it was a constant. The stuff on every surface, the dishes, the laundry, the activities. I felt like I was barely keeping my head above water. Our house is small, at least in US standards, but our stuff was abundant. Not to mention depression and anxiety that was pretty much a constant companion. Pulling myself out of that was a struggle, but eliminating the clutter in my home and getting my house in order was a huge part of that. And that overwhelming feeling kept decreasing as I was getting rid of stuff and developing better habits. So here are six things that I fall back on if that overwhelming feeling creeps back in. Number one, do the dishes. This is always number one. Why? Because when we get our dishes done, the rest of the house seems just a little bit more manageable. Having the dishes piled up in the sink and on the counter is a heavy weight. And when that's clear, even just getting one load done eliminates that nagging feeling and makes the house feel more under control. Number two, clear a surface. I go for either the table or a kitchen counter. But it honestly doesn't matter what surface you clear. As long as you have one place to rest your eyes, it will make you feel a little bit calmer. I prefer to clear a kitchen counter because then I have a workstation for when I need to come in and prepare a meal again. Because really, with this many kids, it feels like I'm cooking all the time. Having a clear counter just gives me a big sigh of relief when I walk into the kitchen. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? Number three, do one thing you've been procrastinating on. Most of the time when I'm overwhelmed, it's because there's something or some things that I absolutely need to do and I absolutely do not want to deal with them. And those can be simple things like calling and making a dentist appointment, driving to the post office to drop off a package, maybe even filling out a form on the school website. I don't know why those things seem so horrible because in reality they take minutes, but I dread them and I put them off and then they become more and more overwhelming to me. So often we don't do a task because we make it bigger in our mind. Like we, we amplify how many dishes are going to be done, how much laundry needs to be done. We think it's going to take us a good 45 minutes to take care of that task. And in reality, it's one or two minutes. Is it fun? No, but again, it's a big sigh of relief when it's done and it's checked off your to-do list. Number four, if you're struggling to take action, use the five second rule. Mel Robbins came out with her five second rule and that's what she used to get out herself out of depression and to take action and do the things that she needed to do. The idea is if you're counting down from five, we all know there's something in us that knows there needs to be some sort of action when we hit zero. So if you have a thought of, I need to do the laundry, and you've been procrastinating on it, as soon as you have that thought, start counting down. Don't allow yourself to think about it. Don't allow your mind to go into how long it's going to take or anything else. Just count down five, four, three, two, one, get up, set the timer for 15 minutes, and work at it. Most of those tasks that we put off are much bigger in our mind than they are in actual work. And we can do something for 15 minutes. Number five, allow yourself to be imperfect. So many of us use perfectionism as an excuse to not actually take any action at all. If you can't do it right the first time, don't do it. And I'm gonna tell you, that's not true. With Pretty much anything. If we want to move forward in our lives, done is better than perfect. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing partially. If we say, I'm not going to declutter that stack of papers until I have an entire week's vacation so I can actually deal with it properly, then the piles of papers are just going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if we go to it and we work for a few minutes and eliminate some things, then the paper pile doesn't grow, it actually decreases and you don't need a whole week to work on it. You can get it done little bits at a time. We tend to require so much of ourselves. We hold ourselves to this unreachable standard of my house has to be pristine, my children have to be dressed this way, everybody needs to view me like superwoman. And the truth is, we're all just living normal lives 
and it's okay to not be perfect. None of us are. I had to realize I don't have the capacity to work on 17 different projects, whether that's growing a garden, sewing my kids' clothes, having a side hustle on Etsy, cooking meals from scratch, fermenting my own foods. I have a limit to what I am capable of. And it doesn't matter if I'm good at those things or know how to do them. I can only really handle three hobbies or activities max. That's it. And I'm much more relaxed if I just focus on one, maybe two. Okay, number six, lower your standards. If you were a clean and tidy person before you had kids and now the house is trashed and you don't understand why you can't get control of it, lower your standards. <laughs> The house is not going to be perfect all the time, and it's okay. I've learned to have my daily and my weekly resets, and the rest of the time the house looks lived in. It's all right to have a house that looks lived in. Your cleaning goals can shift from having a room where the vacuum lines are completely visible to being okay with vacuuming once a week. When I reduced the amount of stuff in our house, the cleaning tasks themselves were much easier. And it's normally us. We're the ones sitting here watching this video, right? Not our spouse, not our kids. It's us. We want this standard of cleanliness in our home. The truth is, the long lawn doesn't bother my husband, so I'm glad when he takes initiative to mow the lawn, but I have to let it go when he doesn't weed eat because it doesn't bother him. So I have two choices. I can either go and weed eat myself so that it looks the way I want, or lower my standards and understand that he's taking care of the lawn even if it's imperfectly, and I can be okay with that. This is the same with having other people help us with the chores. If the kids mop the floor or clean the sinks, it's not going to be pristine, but over a month when they're doing it once a week, it will all get clean, and that's perfectly okay. If you'd like to join the Clutter Free Army and tackle a different area of your house once a week with my 10 minute missions, then go ahead and click the link below to find all about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.